Hi everybody. Hi mom. This is going to be a short uh, tutorial, at least I hope it's going to be short, on how I get started on uh, making an envelope journal. Now my good friend Irene had sent me these cute little clasp envelopes because I had mentioned that I couldn't find any for a swap that I was in and all I did was I took uh, a larger one apart and I cut it down to size and re-glued it together. Anyway, I was down in the States, um, I don't know, last week, and went to the Dollar Tree there. Our Dollar Tree, for some reason, doesn't carry them, but the one in the States does, so I did find the actual size I needed. Of course, this was after the journal was completed. <laughs> but that's okay, because I like actually making the size. This is a 9 by 12 clasp envelope so that when you fold it in half you now have a 6 by 9 which is a really nice size for a journal. Now I had gone ahead and I originally had filmed a tutorial on how I take my envelopes apart and what I do to it to get it prepared and for some reason I, I honestly don't know what happened the video was you could hear me talking but all you saw was a picture nothing else. So I had to delete it all and start again. But this is what I had originally done for the tutorial. This is the Steamtown Spring by Ephemera's Vintage Garden. This is a journal that I'm going to make. And this one is only a 4x6 size journal. It's a nice tiny one. And I've already done the inside. I haven't done the flap yet, obviously. Uh, but this is how, you know, I get started. So we're, we're at this point. Now this actually works out well because now the decoupage is all uh, dry and everything. So I can actually show you how to do a clasp, which is the reason I started this to begin with. I had a um, subscriber ask how I, you know, put my clasps on my envelopes. So I will redo the first part to show you how I get it prepped. Now, I just have these little cheapo uh, spatulas from the dollar store. And all I do is slip it underneath here and slide it down to work, work it open. And then I'll show you on the inside here. And I just kind of saw it back and forth. It doesn't matter if it rips a little bit because it's all going to be covered with paper. So, you know, really doesn't matter. Now, because this is the clasp, and you can see that it actually goes right through to the other side. I can't go any further than that. Uh, so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to bend this up. And I'm just going to open this up like this. And then I am going to cut it. Just like that. Okay, so now you have a fully open envelope. I'll turn it this way. Now... I want to reinforce my spine, but I don't want to do it on the outside where it will show. And I'm going to use some Tyvek. Now, this is the package that I have. I got this. I'm in Canada, so I don't know where you guys would find it. Uh, Crafty Irina showed a roll of Tyvek, and I believe it's sticky on one side, which is perfect. I haven't seen that up here, but I have tons of these envelopes. So I just cut them to the size that I want. I open up the envelope just like I did this one, and then just cut strips to the size that I need. And it lasts a long time. I've used it for many, many books, and I still have a ton of it left. So I'm going to use my decoupage as my glue base and just a, uh, a brush. Okay, I'm just going to remove that. That keeps sticking. It's annoying. Okay, let me grab my brush that's sitting in the water. From my first attempt at this tutorial, it is a beautiful day again here today. Not too hot today, which is awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do, set that aside, and I'm just going to paint my Tyvek. Now, I want to be generous without being drippy, crazy generous, because when I flip it over, I don't want it to roll off the paper. Plus it'll take forever to dry and I don't want that either. But if you go too thin, especially right now in the summertime where I am downstairs, but it's pretty warm down here too. 
So everything dries a lot faster. Okay, I believe I got it everywhere. I'm going to move that, quickly give that a wipe, grab my envelope, and then I'm just going to somewhat center it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and then I'm going to take my bone folder and just kind of push it around to make sure that it's sticking everywhere. And if it goes past, I will wipe that off because you don't want your envelope stuck together completely. Okay. Just gonna give that a quick wipe. All right, so that's the first part of that. Now, what I wanna do is I want this where the flap is, I want this as my pocket. So I don't want any glue on this side from the fold line here, nothing on that side. But on this side, I actually do uh, want glue because I want to glue this solid. So I'm gonna try and be quick about this. And again, making sure I get it everywhere so that the whole paper sticks down. That's sometimes I find a little hard to do, personally. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just not very fast at it and ends up drawing too quickly on me. But it is a junk, kind of a junky journal, so it's not meant to be perfect. It will bubble on you, and that's okay. That's part of its charm, at least for me. So if that's not the look you're going for, you probably won't like um, doing these journals this way. Okay, so now you want to make sure that you get the right side down first. So the one with the glue there is what you want down first. Now I'm going to quickly put some glue along here so that I can stick the envelope back down together. Okay, I like that. I'll take my bone folder and I'm gonna push it to this way, to the end. I don't wanna push it that way because that'll go into the envelope, pocket part of it. Not worried about getting the glue on this side because Paper's going to go on that side anyways, and uh, I am going to adhere it with um, decoupage, so that's fine. Now, you see, you are going to get a little bit of bubbling, because the reason that happens is you're getting paper wet. It's not a heavyweight paper either. You're getting it wet, it's going to stretch it. It, it is. It's just going to change its shape. There's no way around that as far as I know. If anybody else knows a way around that, please leave me a comment and let me know um, so I can pass that on. Like I said before, it doesn't bother me in the slightest bit. I think it just adds to the charm of it. So then I'm going to just stick the bottom back up again. Now, like I said, this isn't going to show. It doesn't matter. This is all going to be covered under the whatever paper I decide. I haven't decided yet what this journal is going to be. Okay. So that's how I prep my envelope. So like, you know, like you can see, it's, it's wrinkly. You can maybe flatten it out a little bit as you go. So when you put the paper on, it might not... Uh, show is bad. Just kind of iron it with your foam folder there. And that kind of flattens that out a little bit. Okay, so now you need to let this dry pretty well. And if you put your hand on it, it feels wet. Like it has kind of a cold feel to it. So that tells me it is wet. And I don't want to add more decoupage to it because that will only wrinkle it even more. So I'm just going to let that dry real well 
and then I'm going to figure out what paper I want to do and I'm going to go out and in on both sides just like I did this one. Now this one I went almost to the edge. I really love this paper. Sorry that's upside down. <laughs> I really love the paper and uh, I wanted to cover, sorry, the whole inside of that. And the outside I wanted a border. So your first step should be when you decide on your envelope, ink up all of the edges that you think will show. Because once you start putting on de the decoupage or gel medium, whatever you decide to use, you're not going to be able to ink it. You can use stays on, but it's still not going to give you that true color. It's still going to almost look translucent. And if that's not the look you're going for, then you want to make sure you ink before you get that on there. So while this was wet, I did let this dry pretty well. And then I did the inside. And while it was still damp, I spritzed it. Well, I actually used the splatter technique with my Lindy's and it's medieval gold that I splattered on that. Okay, so like I said before, I am gonna cover the flat. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to lay it over something, I don't know what yet, and trace it out, the shape. Cut it out, find my center, and cut a hole for my prongs to fit through. Now you can see this is sort of wonky because originally it didn't line up with the prongs so I actually hole punched it farther over so it would fit nicely. Now when I cover the front and the inside that wonky hole won't show. It'll only be a nice um, with the hole punch, you know. Okay, does that make sense? I hope so. Now I'm going to show you how I do my clasps. Uh, this is the, going to be the front. I'm going to find my center. So because this is a 4x6, obviously 3 inches is going to be my center. So it's not quite 6, so I'm guesstimating here. And what I'm going to do is... Oh, sorry. Here, let me move that. I'm trying to spin my doohickey there so I can get my pen out. Okay. Now, three inches is my center. I want two eyelets. So let me grab an eyelet, a couple of eyelets out of here. Okay, there's one. That's a different color. I need a different color. I think those are both. Yep. Okay. So this is my center right there. Now, I'm going to mark it there and there so that's where I want my holes to go so I'm going to use my crocodile for this now if you're not too familiar with the crocodile or you have one and you don't use it because you're afraid of it uh, I will give you kind of an idea of of how I use mine uh, First off, you have to decide the size of eyelet. Now, this one here is considered the large eyelet. Okay, so there's two sides. You can see the hole here, and then you can see the hole here. Obviously, that's a bigger hole. Is that going to be the right one? Yes, it is, because it fits in that hole. Flip it over, doesn't fit in that hole. So, you know which side you need. You need this one. Secondly, you want to determine how far in you want to create that hole. Now, if I kept it at this setting, my hole would be way down there. I don't want it down there. So, if I want it to be here, I'm going to loosen this up, and this slides. So, if I set it halfway and tighten it, we'll see where I get. Yep, that's exactly where I want it. So, I want mine halfway down the slider and then I'm going to find that little black spot in the center and I'm going to punch a hole. Okay, that's it. That's all there is to it. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Punch a hole. Simple. Easy peasy. Now, you can do this one of two ways. I already have my paper on here. So therefore my eyelet's going to show. Okay, you can 
Do your eyelets before you add your center paper. Punch your eyelets through and then put your paper over so it doesn't show or do it like I do it. Um, I always find these work really well if you use a good quality eyelet. Don't use the cheapy eyelets because these will just squish them. They don't um, curl back properly. That's what I found anyways with the cheaper brand. I like We Are Memory Makers. They have good quality. <clears throat> so I'm going to place mine in the hole. Now again, because you used the big side, you want to use the big post, okay, for the bigger eyelets. And that means you have to turn this one as well to match up with your eyelet hole. Come on, turn. You kind of have to lift it, spin it, and then push it back in, and then push it down. Okay, so that matches up with my big one there, okay? So I am going to put the peg part down towards the post, if that makes sense, okay? Because, okay, the reasoning behind that. This part that curls, you want it to curl on this disc. So that kind of pushes it down and then curls it up again. All right, so make sure that's in the hole properly and that it's sitting on top. Now I do a gentle squeeze, just a gentle squeeze to see if it's squeezing properly. See, I'm gonna show that up nice and close if I can. You see how it started to break open? Now sometimes you'll only see part of it broken and the other parts curling in to the middle. You don't want that. If that's happening, either replace it or, you know, take something um, like I have one of these. Hang on. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, one of these. Okay. So I might stick it in the hole and then push it so that they're curling out if I'm being real cheap. <laughs> okay. So now it's it's going the way I want. So now I'll put it back in. Make sure that I'm holding it nice and straight. And then I'm going to push. See? And it curled right flat. Okay? There's nothing curled into the center. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And gently squeeze. See, get it started and see if it's going right. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Let me give it another soft squeeze and see. It sounds a little funny. Sometimes you can go by, oh, yep, it's going to be perfect. And I have a really small hand, you guys, so I have to hold the handle right at the very end in order to get the power to squeeze. I can't hold it here and get a proper squeeze. So if you're having issues, that might be one of them. Okay, so there's my eyelets. And then, uh, I need some seam binding or something. Oh, here's a, this isn't what I'm gonna use, but and it's gonna be much longer. You're gonna cut the length you want. I'm gonna do like a wrap method. And then I need a button. should have had the button out. Sorry about that. So obviously this isn't going to be the button I'm going to use. I'm just going to do it as a demo. So because I've got my button sitting on top of these eyelets, that gives you space. Okay. And what I would do is I would put this up like this and up like this, like so, picturing this being a much longer length, and then I would thread it into my button. And sometimes that's easy, and sometimes it's not. It takes patience, if you're using seam binding especially, because it tends to shred. So that's the one side, and then 
trying to stay on camera as well as see what I'm doing. Where'd the hula go? Come here, you. There. Did I get it? Yes, I did. Don't let go. There we are. Okay. So I would do that. Now you can do it on the top as a bow, or you can um, do it the other way that I've done before where you only thread one side up and then go down. So I'll, do, I'll show you that one too. You can go down like this so that you've only got you know that showing. Tie it and then wrap your seam binding. <laughs> Mental pause, sorry. Yeah, so you just tie a knot underneath it. I'll just do a single so I can get it back off again. And then this being long, you would wrap it around and then wind it around the button. That's how I do mine. So, I mean, it looks okay on the inside. You know, it's just a little bit of a seam binding showing. So that's how I do my clasps. That's how I get my envelopes prepped. I hope this is helpful. And like I said before, this isn't going to look perfect for you. It's just not. Um, you could try as, you know, once it's dry, you could try taking an iron if you wanted and, and iron it down without the decoupage on this side, of course. Um, you know, make sure that it's just paper you're ironing or put, uh, put something over top, like another piece of scrap and iron that and, uh, see if that works for you. But you can slightly see, uh, here, you can see the tie back. So now, when I folded this, this is super strong. Sometimes I'll do another, you know, I'll wrap paper around it on the outside. That'll give me even more strength. Yeah, sometimes not. Sometimes I'll just do a strip of um, lace or ribbon, something like that. And I will hand stitch right through it. Um, yeah, so that's how I do them. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions, just leave me a comment. I will try my best to answer it. And uh, yeah, have a great week. Bye.